Hello and welcome to Show Love. I'm Bronwyn Murphy. Now I know I have a tendency to gush over people, but this wonderful man thoroughly deserves our love. Always a pleasure to have a good natter with the lovely Joe Lysett. So please welcome the amazing comedian Joe Lysett. That other bit won't make it. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it how easy like, it is oh, to make a look. podcast. <laughs> um, right, I promise you booze. Yes, and, and you brought me some Prosecco and you in a gorgeous me, bo- bottle. What did I promise nice you? You promised me sex chat. Yeah. Okay. Do you yeah. remember when we were together and you said, uh, oh, I'll do a podcast with you, Bronwyn. Yeah. I'm up for it. Let's talk about sex. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, we, well, I think you encouraged the sex um, side of it. Probably. I um, just said, I'm always up for a podcast. I thought you were as obsessed about talking this about sex is. as me. Where the, it's, <laughs> oh, no, I've never done that on a podcast before. There you go. That's and you okay. brought these lovely glasses, which I'll describe for the benefit of the listeners, is... Cheap plastic. Cheap plastic. <laughs> very much landfill. Um, this, I think I got them from the band. This is going to this is going to clog some fish's gills uh, in years. I'm going to gonna keep them forever. But they're shaped in a lovely heart shape. And they're red. Which is perfect for the show love podcast. Oh, you remembered what it's called. Um, <laughs> right. So. I love that Let's that's, get serious. That's, the, that's the, all the standard is, that you just need to remember the name of the podcast. I know. I, like, well, that's yeah, the I could just will... do it because you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do it for you, Bronwyn, stop nagging me. I didn't even nag you, though. I think you, you didn't nag me. No, I said I'd love to do the podcast, and here I and am. And here you and are. I've remembered True what it's to your called. word. <laughs> <laughs> Have you Hang listened to any of them, though? Yes, I listened to the first couple. Did you? Oh, yeah. about male suicide and, yes, <laughs> and yeah. being lonely. How, how but joyful. They were both really lovely. I listened to them in the gym. Because I like to sort of mix things up a bit. I like to have some sort of easy going, like there's um, a podcast called Off Menu, which is uh, about comedians talking about food. Oh, yeah. And then it's nice to have people talking about some Something real stuff as well. Yeah, and yeah. Like, so I oscillate between those sorts of things. Cheers. Cheers. You're adorable. You're adorable. Mm. I don't actually know how to drink from this. What's the best place from to drink? The, uh, from the, 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 from the point. tip of the heart. <laughs> Oh my God, this is loud. So, oh, let's yeah, talk about nice, uh, the fact that you are now the mummy, <laughs> as you call yourself, of consumer rights. Yeah, I call myself mummy. I know, I like that you go, what, where's that come from? Um, uh, my friend Matt started referring to himself as mummy, and then I... It started, really suits you, really. Yeah, I don't know why. And I, and I don't get weirded out by that, it's, being I think a mummy lots myself. Lots of people think it's really weird. Do, but you presi- do, you, do you call yourself a mummy and do your kids I call, call you mummy or mum? I, they call me mum now because they're 15 and 16, but yeah. I call myself mummy still because yeah. I don't want to call it. Yeah. And they just look at me like, you're a dick. Yeah. Well, um, it's mom in Birmingham. Oh, so, is it? Like mm, America? Yeah. So sometimes I tweet and I'll say, uh, I'll write mom in some Like sentence. calling yourself mummy still? No, no, like I'll, I'll do a your mum joke or something like that. Oh, right. And people will go... Oh, you're not in America, actually. It's mum here, over here. Oh, uh, do, do you get and, a lot and then I have to of sort shit? of go. No, not really. But like people get, you know, if they see a weakness like that, they it, just pounce on it. Yeah, and but then you actually, say, actually, actually, in, in Birmingham, Birmingham, we say mum. Actually, say it, in prick. Yeah, say it in a in a sentence with the accent. Um, I'm just gonna go home and see me mum. <laughs> you don't go. I'm gonna go and see me. I'm gonna go and see me mum. It doesn't work in the accent. I'm going to go see mum. I've got a, a good friend from Birmingham, Hattie. See, she's a journalist, but she uh, she talks a bit like that. She, I'll cut that out. She'll kill me. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so yes. your your own TV show, yeah, uh, called Joe Lice. It's got you back. Yeah, on Channel Four. Mm. It's quite exciting. It's really exciting. Uh, we're in the offices of. Actually. We are. Yeah, people are ferreting away in uh, the room next to us, working on ideas. You've whereas got we're like sat at here. least twenty desks of people. It's scary, actually. It's quite a lot of responsibility. The amount of people that work on the, this show. And whereas on the show that we work on, Sewing Bee, that's a sort of show that would exist without me. This one no. is literally called Joe Likes yeah, has Got I Your know. Back. <laughs> yeah, don't so I can't, I can't go, oh, actually, I'm not going to do it anymore because they're like, well. So you're here every day? like. So. I basically, if I'm not filming, I'm here Monday to Friday. And I really love it because I love, and I didn't realise how much I'd missed working with a team and work, seeing the same people every day. Even just the sort of basic level of going watching for tea last night and all that you just don't have that when you're a stand-up water cooler moments water cooler moments and that feeling on a Friday when it sort of clicks into about half four and people are like oh should we have a drink let's go down the pub Uh, it's 
it's a really lovely thing. So it's described the show as the sexy watchdog yeah. on uh, on the internet. Yes, uh, that's quite quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, so it's like watchdog with jokes, basically. So we do we take ideas and then we make them what watchdog would do in a slightly drier way. We would put some jokes in and make it really silly. We do stunts and um, use comedians and yeah. And so, when are we able to see this? When will this so be on? So the new series, we haven't got exact dates, but sort of February, March time, the new series will start. Yeah. But it's a longer series, so it's eight episodes rather than six. That means they've got faith in you. Well, That yes, means you're a success, it, Joe Lightfoot. Oh, it. shit. Can I swear on this podcast? Yeah. Oh, fucking shit. <laughs> no problem. Um, no. Uh, yeah, it's, it is, it's a good sign, but it just means there's a lot more to do. But this series, we've got um, a few extra sort of hands mm-hmm. on deck, both in the production team, and also we're going to use people like Rosie Jones um, she's going to help with doing her own stories um, Mark Silcox my sidekick is back so he's going to do more and then some other special guests who I can't mention at this point okay no and uh, you're basically helping people yeah because they have shit happen to them and they go help and yeah. then you and I've got their back and you've got their back so uh, like last series we helped a girl who'd been scammed out of loads of her, like thousands of pounds of her savings and we managed to get it back for her and we got uber eats to change their policies uh we did loads of you're really stuff. good at that but do you not you have like no fear mm. like you i know you no, said i've do. done sort of pseudonyms or whatever the word is yes where yeah. you you adopt another name yeah. name and then and then you like get things changed or you get apologies or whatever yeah it's sort of weirdly, if most people just want a quiet, gentle life. Yeah. And yeah. if they're scamming you or if they're like working at a company that's behaving badly, generally they still want a quiet life. So if you like badger them loads, often they'll just go, oh, God, then. You know, so like, is that the secret that of you? Like, persistence, yeah. massively. But yeah. you seem to be really good at that. Well, I'm annoying, yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, I like being annoying. To no, but people. like when some people would, like you say, would just give up and go, Oh, oh, I mean, there's so many times that I can't be bothered to follow something up with a complaint or whatever. Yeah. Like, people get away with murder. They do. You're like, I'm not fucking helping. Well, that's it. If we all complained more, mm. then they would get away with a lot less and they'd do it a lot less. You're the man for the but, job. Um, um, yeah. I mean, Channel 4 are paying me handsomely, so it's not like I'm doing <laughs> it out of entirely the goodness of my did, own heart. it did kind of start like that, <clears> because <throat> it came from your most famous... Um, TV moment that you said to me that will be on your gravestone. Yeah. Um, the eight out of ten cats uh, parking ticket. Thing, yeah, yeah. Which, if anyone hasn't seen it, please look it on YouTube. It is amazing. Um, and that will like my uh, I call her landlady, but actually she's my other mother. I have three mothers, and there's a lady who I live with in London um, called Jenny Bevan, OBE, and she is a costume designer, and she constantly. Like if someone comes around the house and they meet, I say hello to them or whatever. She's like, "Oh, have you seen the parking fine?" And in a bit, I go, "No." And she's like, "Should get the laptop out, like really proud." And I'm like, "I'm done that to quite a few people." Yeah, well, like, it's fine if like I'm not there. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, like stood like, oh, there going, like, "Oh God, like what's it funny funny?" Well, she'd or be like, so proud of it. Though. Nobody watches it and doesn't find it funny. People do really like it. It's amazing. It's silly. It, it is and amazing. what's weird about that is I didn't think it was funny at the time. Really? I, I Where did it come from? I just I got this parking fine in York and uh, it was the fact that they, someone had written taxi rank on the side of the car that I just thought was such a like petty sort of <laughs> pathetic thing to do so I thought well, I'll you know I'll run with this and see where it goes but I, I, I have always have threads going at all times of different things that I'm yeah, challenging so how whether. do you so, do that how do you keep on top of that <clears throat> well just some, sometimes they fall away but I've got nothing else. That's what, I'm, that's what I do. That's what I write. So, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And that's all I'm doing. So, I mean, we were talking about when we were on Sony, like our current thing is uh, when companies ask me, Joe Lysett TV celebrity, to do adverts for them on Instagram, I've started agreeing to it with no intention of doing the advert just to get them to send me the free stuff <laughs> and then toy with them because now I've got a free I don't know, bag or whatever it is yeah. they've sent me. Yeah. I can use that as leverage against them. Mm. And, uh, what are you going to hold against me? <laughs> well, if you send me something free, then <laughs> this Prosecco, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. I and is that for it. your own personal enjoyment or that's for your show? <laughs> I, well, I get loads of enjoyment from it and then it's a happy sort of accident that it can then go into stand-up. And, and then your book, 
um, that that followed on from the sketch. Yeah. I mean, the the most famous uh, bit. I'm going to ask you to say it. I bet everyone asked you to say it. The bit from uh, Doth. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, Tell well, me the, the, the original phrase. It's a Victorian phrase, which is. Um, Kind words doth butter no parsnips. <laughs> it's such a like <laughs> passive aggressive so like. Um, it's great. It, it's it's beautiful, isn't yeah. it? And my friend told me about it, and it became this uh, whole thing. Um, uh, yeah, I used it in the parking fine thing, didn't I? Is yes, it, it is you in the did. That's, thing. I've sort of forgotten that. It's it's like yeah. I don't know. Maybe now it, you've had it so much that so that's. Famous that that saying. Well, well it was it know, was in the Victorian you, era, but, but like no, now people back. sort of start saying it. Yeah, and well, I love it because it's such a pricky thing to say. Like, it's kind of like well, that doth butter no parsnips. <laughs> it doesn't really mean anything, but it sort of does at the same but time. But you say it so well as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank it, you. Yeah. Um, so yes, that's that's my and then your, my catchphrase. Your book um, called Parsnips called, Buttered. Called Parsnips Buttered. Then follows on from you like um, pretending to be various people and. Yeah. And complaining. I shouldn't have called it parsnips butter because it gets very confused in bookshops with cookery, cookery books. Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah. So I think sales potentially, the people didn't quite know where to put it on the shelf. I think anyone who's a fan. Yeah, I mean, no. that's it. But like most people who work in Waterstones are probably oh, yeah. not a fan of me. They're more <laughs> a fan of Chaucer. <laughs> Mm. Oh, yeah. I love the way you say it. <laughs> Chaucer. Chaucer. Um, so anyway, this is I, slipping I, down so it, nice. It, well, by the way, Bromley. Good, good. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's really nice. Um, Are you a big it's drinker? Sort of, it's talking about the drink. <laughs> Am I? Um, um, I'm not a big drinker. I'm a lightweight because oh, yeah. um, there have been various times in my career when I've had a little bit too much. When I say too much, I've had like two, and I've got my boobs out and got in trouble. Okay. Um, I, I just it, it just goes straight to my head, and I just get silly I and do. giddy, yeah. Right. So and then vomit no, or oh, and then I get vomit, yeah. Then then it heads, and I've done it outside of taxis, and yeah, it's not it's not pretty. <laughs> so I just don't do it as much now. Right, okay. And I'm a, a bit older than you, so it's a, so anyway, your book. Yes. Um, I, I listened to it on Audible, and uh, it's, it was great because it was your voice, and it was like you were in the car with me, and then I turned up at work, and you were there, and um, fa- yeah. fangirled a little bit. Um, but it was quite. Um, it was quite random, like some of the shit that comes out of your head. Yeah. And it's quite, because I've written here, uh, as I know you, you're so loyal and dainty. Ah. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of how I see you. Yeah, but dainty then, is a new one. I quite like, it, I don't yeah. feel dainty. No, you're so charming uh, and like you make everyone feel safe and. Uh, well, that's how I, mean, I what yeah, I get from you. I, anyway. I have no capacity to keep anyone safe. I mean, I've got very weak upper body strength. Think you, I would run from a. No, uh, but you'd, you'd you'd help with your words, like you'd you'd be like. I would no. try and negotiate our way uh, out exactly. of something. But if some if if shit actually hit the fan, I would abandon you immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want you to know you. that. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, no, you've upset you, me. I, you would go straight under the bus. <laughs> I don't believe you though. You're too dainty yeah, okay. and loyal. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, so I was a bit confused. Like, where is this like demon come from? Some of the stuff you say. Mm. I mean, poor Amanda Holden. Yeah. Have you worked with her? Yes, I have. It's, I've heard she's actually really nice. She's really nice. Yeah. I think. I, <laughs> Can I'm, I give you someone else to? Uh, no, I'm not going to say. I'm, that's not very professional. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's. You can no, tell it's me quite afterwards. funny though because she's got that. She's got kind of that rep that you can like take the mickey out of her. I'm sure it's quite funny. I don't know this. I mean, I describe her in my stand up as despicable. <laughs> and Does she know this? Has she ever seen I have it? no idea. And, and I don't really know where it's come from. But yeah. It's just become like a running joke. I have the same with Eamon Holmes, and he's really lovely. He's to lovely, well, he's lovely. So, like, I've just, there are two people that I've written loads oh, of jokes about. Oh, off Eamon Holmes. There was a running gag on my Radio 4 series for ages that every episode there would be a joke at the expense of Eamon Holmes. Oh my goodness. It's just because he's just a bit grumpy. And also they're on the telly all the time. And he he is, I mean, he's the first one to say he's quite grumpy. Yeah. Um, But the Amanda Holden thing I'm sort of softening on because actually I based it on... So nice as well. Well, I don't think she'll agree with that. I don't think she cares, does she? Well, any publicity is good publicity, right? Exactly. So it's all fine. But um, I do wonder sometimes, because I nearly met Cheryl Cole the other week. She called Cheryl, sorry, yeah, Cheryl. Yeah, yeah. Um, we all know her as Cheryl Cole. Cheryl Fernandez, Cole, yeah, what, yeah. Whatever, Fernandez, whatever. And I, I forgot that I'd written quite scathing stand-up about her, so I didn't. I avoided clocking eyes with her. Really? So that I didn't, just in case she'd yeah, heard she heard stand-up, it was like this bitch. bloody trick, yeah. 
So I forget sometimes that celebs Somebody's might actually have heard what I've said. Slap you around the face. I don't do it that often. I've done it with Cara Delevingne. I've slapped But that's off. what I mean. Like, you're, you're really brave. Like, yeah. because you, you go out there and, like, you've got everyone's back and you're fighting for, like, the little person, the yeah. public or I'm whatever. not sure you could argue me slagging off Amanda Holden is me. <laughs> Me fighting for the little person. I'd be too scared to take off any moment. Unless you're too. referring to Les Dennis as the little person. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, Les, so is he? Yeah, I think that's the other reason why I feel like she's potential fair game, is yeah. I feel sad for Les. Yeah, sad for Les. And she was on Blind Date. She was, she was, on, she was yeah. hungry for it, wasn't she? She was, yeah. 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 Good on her. Good on her, um, good luck to her. But, but like, what? <laughs> what is your inspiration for... For doing for doing these things, you know, like saving people and saying these things about people. Um, that's a good question. It's just funny, isn't it? I just find it funny. Yeah. Well, I, I get very frustrated about injustices and when people are being treated unfairly, and um, particularly by big corporations that have no real respect for the individual or human dignity. You know, yeah. often they're so often um, employing people in ways that are. Um, really unkind mm. but this if it was an individual doing it they would they'd feel bad but actually big companies act very differently so uh, yeah, they don't have a moral compass yeah I feel like you identify with like your normal Joe well yeah, I, I suppose a lot of it comes from my, my parents and the way they were treated as people in the working world and I watched uh, how companies lied to both my parents about the way that they were going to be treated and my mum worked at Cadbury's and um, oh my goodness like Cadbury's world I've been there Birmingham yeah yeah so oh she was in Bourneville yeah. she works at the actual well she worked in graphic design so she designed like a lot of packaging and uh, internal brochures and things like that and they were bought out by Kraft the um, horrible cheese people they make horrible cheese and they said oh no no it's all, everything's gonna be the same like don't worry we won't make any redundancies and then two years later made loads of people redundant including my mother and um my father was a teacher he was also designed shop fronts before but like also the way just the working world treated my father particularly towards the end of his working career just there was very little respect given to a man yeah. that i have nothing but respect yeah, for yeah yeah and you just see these institutions and the working, the workplace sort of treat people really unfairly. And I suppose uh, I don't feel like I can do anything about that. Actually, you know, I'm not. Um, I, I can't be asked to learn to be a lawyer or whatever. <laughs> I, I do find <laughs> life one, funny. One step better. One get step on better. Telly. Get on telly and <laughs> rip the piss out. Yeah. Of yeah. So uh, authority and things like that. I've always had. Um, uh, I've always referred to myself as recalcitrant, which uh, Jesus, is, is a big word. I don't know a big word. It just means that I have um, a, a lack of respect for authority. Right. So I'd like to take on people people who think they're in authority. Yeah. I think, why? Why do you think that? Yeah. And what's stopping me from doing this? And that's what we love about you. Yeah. You're very intelligent, aren't you? No. no. You, you, um, um, no, yeah, I'm all right, actually. Yeah. Actually, that's me being yeah, modest. Hell, you I'm are. so fucking smart. <laughs> You're right. It's quite sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Anyway, so uh, th that's your TV series coming yes. every March, April time. Yes. And we will be watching that. And you'll be saving saving people, which yeah. is... Yeah, and then the sewing bill will go out soon after that. Oh, and, and everyone me. will be like, oh, fucking hell, he's done the telly too much. I'm a bit... Yeah, they will. I'm a bit worried also, because sewing bill is such a nice, lovely programme. So, listeners of the podcast, you might not be aware that Bronwyn, the host of this podcast, yeah. who you're listening to, is the regular floor manager and life and soul of the party at <laughs> sewing bill. And, Sweet now. Um, uh, yeah, we worked together... Uh, on that show, don't we? Yeah, That's how we, we know do. each other. And um, is so good at her job and so lovely. But um, I'm not going to compliment you ever again now. You've had your compliment for now. Um, but uh, I worry about that show because it's so nice and yeah. there's such a nice atmosphere on set and just in general. Um, but it, when it broadcasts, it's, people go, oh, isn't that lovely? And it's all light. I'm worried that people will like, buy tickets to see me if I do a tour again and 
then I'm on stage talking about my arsehole and jeers and all of that. And they're like, oh, he's not like this on the set. And I'm a bit worried. That's kind of how I felt a bit. Listening yeah. to your book, it's yeah. like, fucking hell, he's yeah. got my arsehole and jeers. And I love arsehole and jeers. <laughs> not from, <laughs> like, no, from mummy. Because you're so dainty. Mummy's so dainty. I can't go. Yeah. It's brilliant. Oh, but that's the semi sides to you. Well, and there's I so many sides to everyone, aren't there? No, we're all, we're not, all multifaceted. Not. No, not everyone. Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah. I know, I know a few people who have got less than one facet, yeah, actually. Yeah, it's like, you're, you're boring. Uh, but yes, uh, you are saying I'm very lucky enough to work with you. Um, well, and I uh, and I, I thought that we got on so well because we bonded over our our want of <laughs> our lust for fitties yeah on the studio floor I feel, I, I feel bad saying that because mm. not just on the studio floor in, in life in life yeah, um, yeah. poor Damo on the camera gets it a yeah, little bit yeah. because uh, he's very attractive well I mean he's not my type but I, he's very flirty so I totally get it and he, he's, so he flirts with you, he doesn't flirt with me, because I think I scare him, yeah. because I'm a bit too much. Well, I mean, you're so open about how attracted you are to him that there's no point in him flirting, it's a waste of his energy, because he knows <laughs> he could get his it. his girlfriend will be listening. Well, she won't be listening. No. She won't even well, know about she it, is. But, yeah, I'm sorry. He's very attractive, and I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, and, and it sounds shallow that we... That we bonded over that. I thought that you probably. Oh. Like, I don't know. It's just yeah. I think there's a weird thing where like, and I kind of get it that uh, when people are sexually attracted, and I'm totally like this. When you're sexually attracted to somebody, it's sort of seen as like a bit wrong or a bit dirty. And I think it all just stems from like probably a, a religious past, and you know, where it was so like was a light as a, exactly. Like a so like you know, the idea of being sexually attracted to someone is essentially straight to hell with you. And actually, I think there's real space now in modern life to be, and, and it's happening a lot in the LGBT community, um, to just be like, actually, we're all human, and sometimes I fancy a quiche, and when I, I go, oh, I'd love a slice of quiche, no one's going like, oh, you fucking pig. They're going, oh, well, go and get some quiche yeah, then. Yeah, and sometimes you're right. like, oh, I'd love someone to wank me off. And people go, oh, you can't say that, and that's, you know... Yeah. Hide, hide that away it's like well and, and it's that's part and of that was it like at that time when we sat there having a cup of tea and I said oh I'd love someone to wank me off and you were like yeah me too yeah. That's, that's when it happened right mm, mm. not so shallow deep and wet fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah yeah deep and wet um, that's, that's but, the takeaway from... <laughs> but what I'm very interested in mm. uh, I'm quite hot I get so hot do you want to open a window no please don't fuss over me you're so oh. lovely um, I d- I've done this before on <laughs> podcast it's awful they're like god you diva I mean there's literally a window there I could open it first. no I'll just take my jumper off alright All right. Um, bless you uh, I'm interested in talking about um, and hoping you can clear up a few things uh, and simplify things yeah for me and Gladys from Wimbledon. I just chose that one because that's what my nan used to be called, who lived in Wimbledon. Oh. You you have various ladies that you, you quote like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I love... Um, Barbara from Stockport or, yeah, yeah. or Abby. Sheila from... Sheila. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I love a name like that. Yeah. Barbara. Brenda. <laughs> Brenda. Brenda's a good one. But Gladys Debbie, from Wimbledon. Debbie's a good one. Yeah, Debbie. <laughs> God, I know, I know a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, she's my nan. Uh, she's dead, so this she won't hear this. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I mean, it was a long time ago. I mean, I'm, I'm still very sad. But she wouldn't know what the fuck we're about to talk about. No. Uh, so this is our audience. Um, let's talk about sex, baby. Mm. Uh, I, now, I don't know how much you're going to delve in personally, but I know that you talk a lot in your stand-up about being pansexual. Yeah. Um, for the viewers, for Gladys, who's listening, yeah. would you mind explaining what pansexual is? Yeah, so absolutely. Um, pan means all, and that's the sort of um, the, the loose definition of it. So it's sort of a, basically, in its loosest definition, means... You want all? Uh, not I want all, but I'm open to being attracted to all things. Yeah. Um, all types of gender and... Uh, uh, race and just shape, size, all of that, uh, within you know the limits of consent and all of those yeah, things. Yeah. You know, I'm, not, um, I'm not here to um, condone anything uh, illegal, illegal or whatever. Yes, yes. But um, basically, it's sort of like a form of bisexuality. So, bisexuality, lots of people understand, is 
quite simply uh, being attracted to both men and women, and that is where I, uh, what I am. Uh, so generally more attracted to women than men, but often I'll see a man and be very attracted to him, but I don't often do anything about it, whereas I'm more likely to with women. But the reason I use pansexual... I don't often say it. I, most of the time I'll just say I'm bisexual yeah. if I'm in passing or whatever because it's so much easier to just explain it because people don't understand what pansexuality yeah. is. Um, pan just means that actually when you're attracted to somebody, often it's, I think, not really to do with the gender. Mm. So if you use Damo as an example... <laughs> Uh, Demo is a man mm. but there are lots of men and you're not attracted to all of them you know, there's lots of men in that sewing room that you're not attracted to um, Demo you're attracted but me, to me I'm attracted to most of them oh okay I'm right, fine. <laughs> okay but you're, maybe you're not a good enough example then okay maybe you're the most heterosexual person in the world because you're attracted to all men yeah, but that, that I mean that is essentially the definition of heterosexual mm. is attracted to men or attracted to the opposite even sex even you're so not you, safe right now yeah well I'm, I'm I know man is safe in Bronwyn's case. I'm, I'm aware of this. Um, and I do have a taser, um, <laughs> just so you're aware. Um, I, I didn't come in unarmed because I'm <laughs> sensible. Um, but uh, I think that being attracted to somebody, their gender forms part of why you're attracted to them, but often it's... Um, the f- uh, twinkle in their eye, their physical yeah. appearance, the uh, energy that, the you, energy just get from that you get from someone, like. yeah. um, all sorts of different things. And that isn't taken into account when you use the term bisexual but or heterosexual mm. or homosexual. Uh, those definitions just literally mean you're attracted to men or women and or both. And actually, I, it's quite an intellectual way of looking at it and... It's probably not that useful going forward, but it's the most honest way that I can describe yeah. my sexuality, which is that often the gender forms only a small part of why I'm attracted to somebody yeah. and loads of other stuff is going on. That's and sometimes you just like because sometimes you just wanna like You want a quiche. And yeah. You want a quiche. Yeah. And actually it doesn't sort of matter. Like the, my friend came up with the idea of like having a really hot wank that you can then wank about later. So yeah. you're wanking about a wank. Yeah, yeah. And actually, there's no gender involved there at all. It's just like feeling yes, sexy and yeah. feeling horny. And sometimes it doesn't, it really doesn't matter what's getting you off. You're just ready to come. You know, mm-hmm. you're just ready to go. Yeah. And actually, that gender just has no role there. So it's not homo, hetero, bi, pan or anything. It's just like horny. And... It's quite a, um, I just think, sort of sl- slightly um, simplistic way of looking yeah. at well, sexuality. Well, everyone, I mean... I'm not sure. What's your name of your nan? Gladys. Gl- Gladys. I'm not sure Gladys will have taken all that in, No, you? no. Uh, we'll simplify it more. But she. But um, in, in simple terms, what you're saying, we're all turned on by different things. Yeah. And, and you're not going, well, I, it's just... Uh, because actually, when we first started talking, they turned turn the lights off. Does that mean we've got to get out? That's it, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't leave me yet. <laughs> um, uh, when we started talking about it, it's very easy because we've been brought up with the term bisexual. Yeah. To go, well, what do you mean? Like, um, you know, why is it different from bisexual? But you're not, it's like you're gender blind, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. That's, how you, you that's the way of looking yeah. at it, yeah. It's it's just about the person well, and what I'm not are. gender blind. That's the thing. Like I do see gender because it's very it's ingrained in all of us. Mm. But uh, just gender isn't the necessarily the prevailing mm. thing. Because often you just see is. like you know you see someone's like oh, got nice arms. You just mm. go oh. and actually it wouldn't matter if it, it literally just attract you. Just it's go just that arms. arms nice. Doesn't matter who the arms attached to. Yeah. So then you're not thinking about the gender necessarily. You just sort of think. But then if it's like a really muscular arm on a sort of very slight woman you'd be I suppose a bit confused by that so gender does play a role it, yeah. you'd be like oh well, that's different but I like that arm but I'm not sure I like that arm on that but person but you say that you you, um, you you go with women more than you go with men yeah does it, what is it about the women then that, that I think it's literally just experience I'm, I haven't had that much experience with men and so I get nervous I don't know it's just be, like not I think also there's ingrained in me like a homophobia that a lot of her people have which is that um, I think like some it feels a bit wrong a bit dirty and that is 
totally wrong, but yeah. that's part of what society but, uh, does, yeah, and the negative yeah, notes, yeah. and or even now there's like homophobia in my family, and it's you know so you know if I know that if I engaged in a homosexual act, uh, there would be people in my family who would think I'd done wrong. But the irony of that is when. And I know I'm not alone in this. When I first started working with you, obviously I'd seen on telly. Um, I, and I shouldn't, because assuming makes an ass out of you and me. Oh, yeah. But I just assumed you were gay. Because yeah, you're of quite, you were quite, you know, you, you talk quite camp and, yeah. and, and, and doesn't, nobody gives a shit whether you are or not or whatever. So the fact that you're like that and then your, your family are. I'm you talking know, about distant family. I'm not yeah, talking yeah. about mum and dad. Oh, well, shit, them, whatever, yeah. That, yeah, that, um, people are always quick to judge, aren't they? They are, and also uh, it's annoying because uh, a lot of women do think I'm gay, or like at least I think some women just want like a nice, like strong man, like manly man, sort of sweep off their feet, and I won't. I'm not that. You keep so putting actually, yourself down saying that's not true. Well, but like, you make I'm not, me feel very safe. But yeah, but and that's it, what a woman wants. Well, maybe. But also, like, I think I've made, in some ways, well, not made a lot from my own back, because this is who I am, but, like, my personality, a lot of women go, like, oh, he's gay, so he can be, like, a friend vibe. Yeah. And often and I'm, like... And you get put in no, the friend I'd like zone. To, but yes, I don't want to be in the friend yeah, zone. Yeah. But there you go. Do you find yourself saying, I, I'm, not, I'm not gay? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm not okay. Let me prove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get my knob out. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> Gladys from Wimbledon. We have totally lost you. Um, Sorry, Gladys. <laughs> so the world's uh, the world's going fast these days. People <laughs> people can't keep up. So there's no like I prefer a cock or I prefer a fanny. No, no. Right. I sort of prefer someone I'm attracted to yeah. rather than so end, when end of the night really has, pissed. <laughs> gone oh all right this will do so when you have sex with them because obviously we've got holes and bits mm. like that that That's must be interesting way of putting it. <laughs> we've got holes and bits yeah. <laughs> hi i'm bronwyn and this is my new album holes and bits um you don't mind where it's going or what what's, well, co- you what's do, coming at you you know you, you want you do mind yeah but it, it, i'm just not restricted necessarily to it but i must have a vagina mm. or an asshole yeah I love that you always bring it back to an arsehole. Yeah. I've not really done much with an arsehole. No, I, and actually it's not... Like you have to have had a few drinks and, yeah. and very much use contraception. I love that you're being so open, Joe. <laughs> it's great. Well, I mean, it's there's great. nothing... Yeah. What, what else can Fuck you it, you're not going to make me like, take any of this out, are you? No. You did look around just a minute ago. So well, you were looking over there, so I thought there was someone... Oh, over no, there. I thought you thought someone was listening and you were like, I've just said arsehole. I don't care. Um, uh, so it's in, being recorded and going out to the world. I obviously yeah, don't care. Yeah, I love that. Uh, more booze. I'm nearly finished, but so in in a. Um, I'm, I'm sipping this very nicely. Very How nice. do you say that? Do you think free free sneed free 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 sneet? It's a beautiful bottle, though. It looks yeah. like a nice bar. Take it home and put Ooh. a candle in it. Or a candle. Yeah, that's oh. a lovely idea. And next time Ooh. you've got your arsehole out, Ooh. light the candle, yes. make it romantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will. Um, so in a world where we're becoming more inclusive, and we've got a long way we, to go, we have. Um, uh, some would say it feels more alienating with all the names and letters. Yeah. Um, and we now have, and I had to Google this because I feel ashamed that I don't know this off, but I know the first few, yeah. but it's really getting a bit longer. Yeah. LGBTQIA. Yeah. There's a couple of pluses sometimes. Um, yeah. Which stand for lesbian, gay, yeah. bisexual, transgender, queer or questioning, intersex and asexual or allied. I don't mean, I've never heard that one before. Um, you, you're probably an ally, I would guess. What does that mean? just means that you are um, supportive of the community. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, God, I fucking am. So you're A. I love well, his love as well. Like, literally, I'm an A, I like that. Yeah. But, I mean, pansexual is, starts with P. And that's, yeah, that's, and that, not, that's not even on there. It's not even in is there. Is that what a plus means? I so the plus is for all the other letters. Yeah, yeah. And there literally can be as many letters as there are people in the world, basically. So, so the letters, whatever you identify whatever with. Whatever you identify as is all encompassed in the plus. Yeah. And there's a weird thing going on with uh, asexual people. Some of them don't want to be included. 
because they reject sexuality and they don't want to have sex. So, oh, right, So they yeah. don't want to be part of the sexuality gang yeah. because sex, they're actually not part of it at all. I do th- agree um, in some respects that the amount of letters there are is um, sort of ridiculous. Well, I just think it's, it, it, it puts fear into people. That, yes, because they're like, like, oh, God, I don't, what's I don't, the right I've thing just to got, say? I've just, yeah, exactly, what's yeah, the right gonna, thing to I'm say? I'm going to piss somebody off. And, uh, and you don't want to piss say, anyone off. No, but all I can say is you will. Like, there's no getting around it. You mm. will end up fucking someone off because people don't agree on it. Yeah. So people don't agree on the inclusion of the A, for example. Yeah. So you might feel like you're being really inclusive, saying like LGBTQ, I A, and, yeah. and then suddenly someone who's A goes, oh, actually, I don't you, want to be in can there. You, yeah. Can you remove me from mm. there? And you would just try and do your best. And I think that's the key, is like just try and do your best, because you won't get it right all the time, because it's impossible mm. to, because people disagree on it. And also... In an ideal world, there wouldn't be any of these letters. Well, ex- they that's would, it. You'd just be love like, people love, are people, yeah, love yeah, is love. Yeah. But Human. unfortunately, we live in a world where people are defined uh, by their sexuality and, and are killed and uh, jailed for it. And if you are in Saudi Arabia or Syria or all these places, uh, you you might just be like, love is love. I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. a man, I'm going to have yeah. sex with a man. Yeah. The dis- society and the government will label you as gay and they will kill you for it and so you you don't have a choice suddenly you're you 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 just wanted to have sex with someone you're in love with and suddenly you're being killed so by uh, embracing the letters and saying okay there are all these letters all these different types of people it allows those people with who identify under those letters to be uh, to find their people to protect each other to create safe spaces for themselves and i don't think there's anything wrong with that but i do think the for me personally, the utopia, the goal is that all the letters evaporate, and we all just accept that some people like this, some people like that, and that they there's no um, uh, uh, it doesn't matter as long as people are consenting, and you know, obviously people aren't fucking animals or kids and all mm. that stuff, but like that we um, we understand that people. Do you think we'll ever get there? No, never. No, I don't think we will uh, because we are. We love a label and we love to be like, oh, she's this and he's yeah, that, yeah. like because that's how we work out who to trust and who we're, who are our people and whatever. Mm. So I don't think we'll ever escape it. And I think you'll just have people on one side who are really obsessed with the letters and want all the letters to be there. You love other people on the other side going like, we shouldn't have letters and all, you know, yeah. love each other and whatever. And actually, the the truth and the happy place is somewhere in the middle mm. in, of pretty much all things I find and, all, and also I mean like but years ago <clears throat> didn't we like it, it was anyone said with anyone years ago like, well yeah the sex, they say like in ancient the, Greek ancient times, Greek that, times like, yeah. there were uh, like older men would sort of teach younger boys about how to have sex and whatever and they were shagging definitely underage mm. lads um and that was just seen as like part of the ritual of growing as a sexual being that you were kind of taught by someone older than you. I mean, like, I don't agree with it because they might not have wanted that. Well, exactly. Yeah. So like, that's not wrong but, either. But there were like homosexual relationships. Yeah, and it and was I, very it open. Was, it, yeah. I think it was very open. I mean, I don't, I've not done the research into it, but the, the, it's often it said. Yeah. And there are, definitely have been societies where bisexuality is the kind of because sex, uh, sex isn't just about procreation. It's about um, societal bonds and um, kind of creating cohesion between people. And so that it, put, it plays um, and of stress relief, all sorts of different things. It plays loads of roles mm. in society. But um, religion sort of... Oh, fucked it. Re- well, religion's all about like not having fun, isn't yeah, it, essentially? Yeah. It's like, oh, no, God doesn't want you to... F- but well, that's fun. just to keep the masses from yeah, in fear, doing whatever it? they want. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so we have to tackle religion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, might, religion is, might, this, yeah. is a great source of um, uh, sexual repression at all. Then I'm um, I'm very much a, a, a full Catholic. No, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm not religious at all. Really. No, I'm sort of spiritual, but I'm not. Uh, absolutely, same, same. I agree with that. But so some of the names have changed though because 
uh, when I was at school in the eighties, yeah, like because they uh, on here it says queer or questioning. That's yeah, the queer. Couldn't say it. Oh, God, it was like the it was like a very yeah, massive yeah. insult. Yeah, well, it's uh, sort of uh, it's very different. But it's sort of like the M word in that it's been reclaimed by right the people that it was sort of fired at, um, and so I I also uh, consider myself to be queer because queer is just sort of like. A bit unusual to the norm, I suppose. Mm, yeah, so I quite yeah. like that. You yeah. know, I quite like calling myself queer because it's sort of. It sounds so good when you it's say funny, it. Oh, he's a queer. Yeah, he's great. He's a queer. But then the doing. gay community is really good at that. Like fag is now used. Is it? You know, oh, sh- she's a fag or whatever. Yeah. Like people, I, so I don't feel any about fear. The insults, like I can say about myself to stop you saying it or something. Yeah, because I'm now saying it about myself, so it sort of takes mm. all the sting out. But, of it. So you can say it. But like, if I said, "Oh, uh, oh, this is my mate Joe. He's queer." Fine. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 See, to me, I'm back at school. Yeah. Thinking, no, no that's course. that's rude. But there are there are older gay people who don't like it because it brings back all sorts of things. Yeah. But I really don't mind being called queer and quite enjoy it. If someone describes me as queer, I'm like, yeah, cool. I don't think I'll be able to bring myself to that. Yeah, okay, well, you don't have to. Because I'm old and it's yeah. back all sorts of Call me a fucking fag, that's better. <laughs> it's my friend Joe, he's a fucking fag. <laughs> but you're not, because no. fag means a gay man, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a sort of derogatory term for... But the, the reason um, uh, I'm interested in fag at the minute is a brilliant artist called Todrick Hall who does very, like, accessible gay anthems and gay people love him, or a lot of gay people do. And... Um, He's got a song called Fag, and it's about how people used to call him Fag, and now he's got a bag. It's like, it's like <laughs> really? now I'm the one with the bag. They call me bitch. Now I look who's famous and rich. It's that really, it's oh, a brilliant, brilliant song. I listen to that. Um, but he had his merch on his tour is just a, one of his t shirts just says Fag in massive letters brilliant. on a t shirt. Brilliant. Which, of course, I bought. Yeah, good. And then your t shirt says Hope. Now. This one says Hope. This one is a charity in. No, no, it's not a charity in Birmingham. This one is the Centrepoint charity, who are a homeless charity, and they uh, make these T-shirts, and you buy them, and some of the money goes to... There you go, saving people again. God, I'm such a you nice guy. You fucking hero. I know. <laughs> um, so just to round it off for Gladys, what can you say and what can't you say? What, oh, just, God, think, I mean, yeah. just be inclusive and open up the conversation, right? Yeah. I mean, and I, don't... Just don't... Um, uh, just try your best. Mm. I mean, that is literally all you can do. And I, um, I, I do the same as well. And if somebody really chastises you for getting something wrong, it's sort of more their problem than yours, yeah. weirdly. Like most decent, normal people, I think, if you go like, oh, I, you know, call me gay and I'm actually not, whatever, mm-hmm. I probably won't call you out on it because it doesn't really affect me that mm. you don't, because I'm not probably going to try and shag Gladys. Yeah. So it doesn't really <laughs> affect me. And she could go around telling other people that I'm gay. And I sort of don't, I just sort of don't mind because it doesn't matter what people You're think. You're so chill. And most, I do think most people are, will go, they might roll their eyes and go, like, oh, God, like, yeah, okay, yeah. whatever. But generally, people don't, as long as you're trying your best. Yeah. They can't really call you out on it because you don't. You mean well. Very quickly, Sam Smith now yes. is called they or them. Yeah, they or them. Um, again, uh, how can we just? Can you just explain that? Um, so Sam Smith now with identifies. A I, think, I think I don't actually know, but I think Sam Smith identifies as gender neutral rather than gender. Maybe gender fluid. I don't know. And what's the difference between those? Gender neutral is like you're not. You don't identify as any gender, essentially. Yeah. Uh, gender fluid is like your gender can take uh, different forms. Oh, so, like, sometimes you feel feminine, sometimes you feel masculine, I suppose. Yeah. And it's fluid. and yeah. So it's easier to Makes just sense, refer yeah. to you as they or them rather than, like, he or she. Because some days you uh, feel like he and some days you feel like she. Yeah. Right. Um, and you, I'm not to know if Sam Smith feels like a man or a woman mm. at any given moment, so I'm better off... It's actually better off just saying Sam. Yeah. Sam wants this, Sam does that. Yeah. It's so much easier than going, they want to go to the shops because it feels a bit weird from a sort of semantic point of view. It's like <laughs> hard when you're, you're saying, English. you're having to think <laughs> things a bit too like, oh, uh, they're coming to the shops. Yeah. It's like, 
uh, yeah, it's some. I, I totally. It's again just so difficult to kind to get of your head get your head it, around. It? It. Yeah, but also language does change, and that's just a part of. I think uh, people will get used to it, and like if you educate children from a young age that some people are they or them, it won't seem weird to them because they'll have just said it their whole lives. It's yeah. weird to us because we're new to it. Yeah, but then. Technically, if you're addressing an individual, so if you're in addressing a group, you can say they or them. Uh, if you're addressing an individual, it should be thou rather than you, according to like proper English. Right. So like thou are coming to the shops. You know, that, <laughs> it feels I'd weird. I quite but like that, is, that to come yeah, back. <laughs> that like, really suits you. Really. <laughs> yeah. Thou art coming to that the shops. <laughs> like so, uh, language has changed and has developed, and you know whatever. And I just think they or them will become a bit easier as people get used to it. But yeah, Sam Smith would prefer to be called they or them rather than he or she. And um, who are we to argue with them? Exactly. And now, to going forward. But notice I had to pause then because you had to get it right. I had to get it right. And sometimes in your head you see, like in my head. I struggle to see Sam Smith as uh, they or them because I've been so used to referring to Sam Smith as he or sh- uh, he yeah, or yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And so it will take time for my brain to just slightly change the perception of Sam Smith's gender. Mm. But it won't take forever. And like in 10 years... Do you know Sam Smith? I've met him very briefly yeah. once. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, not, not, I thought you were, like, talking about your best resume. friends. Could have been. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I don't know what Sam Smith does when they have to put their gender on a form or whatever. What, what do you do then? I mean, but now again, like, it's, hopefully it's opening up a bit. Yeah. And it's not just the M or the F. No. There's an, maybe other, if they yeah. like, opened it a bit. And also it gets confusing as well when sort of medical stuff kicks in because Sam Smith doesn't identify as, uh, per, like in, in of themselves, doesn't identify as one gender or another, but Sam Smith's definitely not going to get ovarian cancer, mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah. might get testicular. Yes. So like the body, the body will present challenges that yeah well the body's always going to be what you're born as unless you change yeah, it yeah right? so like so. that's that's where like sex and gender is slightly different things because yeah. gender's what's put on top of sex that like you can't deny that you've got cock and balls yeah but there are so there's um intersex people are people who uh, have um a variation of so you can there are people that have Born with both. Born with kind of both. Yeah. yeah all versions of both. Quite, quite more than we think, I think. And, yeah. Well, actually, the, the stats are really interesting about, like, so the amount of people that identify as transgender um, are about is something like 5%, actually, which is uh, the, the same number as there are gingers. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like actually it's so common. Yeah. Like, we think how many ginger people you know. You're like, oh, I've got another so yeah, yeah. Actually... Yeah. There's that many people who identify as I love that you know these facts. I've done my research because yeah. I'm fascinated by it. Yeah, love me it. too. Me too. And I love that you've been really open and talked about it and I'm going to let you go in a sec. But okay. the end... I mean, I haven't finished the booze <laughs> yet, so... <laughs> we could do that together. Yeah. And then, you know, and then you'll don't get really your taser out. Your <laughs> <laughs> taser's coming right out. Do you want to see my tits? <laughs> You're like, nah. <laughs> you imagine the team in the office came up. What's going on with Joe? Yeah, that guy just goes tasering a woman's tits. <laughs> Why is Joe tasering a woman's tits over there? You wouldn't taser my tits, would you? I mean, if you got them out. <laughs> oh, be, God. Be... In the good old days, we used to love seeing my tits. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, in the good old days, you could taser a woman in the tits. <laughs> Can't do it anymore. It's all changed. So, PC love- gone mad. Can't taser a it woman in the tits has, It fucking has. I'm so disappointed. Um, uh, Joe Lysa, if I told you I love you. Yes. Uh, Too many enough, times. Enough. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you Can for I having me. Can I kiss you now? No. I, I, in a platonic way that is sensible and kind. I actually wrote there. Can I kiss you? Oh. Oh.
I thought you'd be so pissed you'd snog me. I, I didn't. No. Um, thanks so much for bringing so much joy. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Room. And thanks for being... I mean, I said this to you after um, Sewing Bee. You are such a ray of sunshine in a room and everyone loves you, so... I, that's how I feel about you. I gush over you every fucking day. Wow. I think you're great. Oh. You're very talented, right. very intellectual, you're, you're, very handsome. Oh, stop it, stop it. <laughs> um, love is love. Love is love. Let's continue to spread the love. And subscribe to the uh, True Love podcast, oh, which I'm never going to forgotten it, I mean. <laughs> Show Love podcast. <laughs> subscribe to the Show Love podcast for all of your love needs. Oh. And there are great episodes about mental health and male mental health. And, and other, some other stuff. Other health. <laughs> and other stuff. Kidney health is a kidney health episode. So I haven't done a kidney health one yet. That's, uh, on the that's list. coming up. That's coming up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a great one on liver health. I don't think I've ever talked so much about cock and balls though. So you know, which is fucking surprising. We haven't talked about this, cock and balls loads. No, well, no, I talk about it all the time. <laughs> that's it for now. Love you for listening, and don't forget to show love. Thank you to Ollie Trevers for Saucy Naughty Rubbish and Danny Wright for staying in. Both doing gigs right now, so please check them out. Thank you to Alex McArdle for sound and edits. And please follow us on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook at Show Love UK. And if you want to join the conversation, please join the group Show Love Podcast on Facebook. Thank you. I'll start it and mean it all to Lay back in bed, reminisce instead Let's plan it all in my head Procrastination, self-stimulation Instant gratification, I'm self-medicating Therapist recommending more Meditating, wasted education I need more admiration And I, I don't wanna bother with today I pretty much missed it anyway Might as well stay, yeah, yeah And I, I don't wanna bother with today I pretty much missed it anyway Shift the moon, so I order Chinese food. Said, okay, just keep the change, dude. Find that situation, spent on dedication. Dreams of Wembley Stadium, and my name carved in the pavement.